Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the wonderful film Baby Ruby. We are joined today by writer and director Bess Wool, as along with actress Noemi Merland. And Bess, I wanted to start by talking a little bit about the development of this script, because you were working on this over the course of, of several years and have said how it started as more of an, an intimate domestic portrayal and a lot of the elements of tone and genre that's interspersed really came through going through several drafts and I was just interested in as you went draft by draft and continued to work with the script how those themes and tones started to really seep into the story more and more. Yeah that's such a good question. Um, I think it was as I allowed my imagination to take flight more once I sort of knew the bones of the characters and and sort of a little bit about what their circumstances were I I sort of let let myself like take the brakes off of my imagination and thought like why not go to this place and why not go to this place and you know the film um is obviously not or maybe not obviously is not autobiographical <laughs> in any way but it contains the seeds of these fears that I had as I became a mother I have three amazing children now and I I, I I just felt like, why not push it further and further and further? And I, I guess as I wrote, I got braver and braver and braver about how to tell this story. I love that. And, and Noemi, in, in playing the role of Joe in the film, when we first meet her at the beginning of the film, she seems like someone who has a very strong sense of self and identity. And then as she becomes a mother, we really see that sense of who she is stripped away. And a lot of the uncertainty that comes into play is her relationship with herself. And I was interested in how you approach playing a character who at the beginning has such a strong sense of identity and then goes on that journey throughout the film. Um, when I first read the script, and I think it was one of her first com uh, our first conversation with Bess, is that I'm not a mother, but I was questioning myself. I remember a lot at that time. I'm still a bit, but um, and when I read the script, I felt so much connected because I was saying to Bess, "Oh, it's like this is my nightmare when I." You know, sometimes you can dream of having a baby and it's a dream and it's nice. It's me, I was dreaming it and it was a nightmare. It was like in the movie. It was all my my fears. I will, I will lose control of my life. The baby will eat me. The baby will kill me. The baby, I will not be able to love the baby. Not having time, not having space, not having... Yeah, and, and uh, I find it very... I don't know, very powerful because even if it's it push the cursor, the degrees of the emotions really far, uh, I find it very interesting because it's, and the fact that Bess makes a lot of uh, genre, uh, like humor, uh, horror, of uh, psychological thriller, like it's cathartic and, 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 and it offers a space uh, not only with words, but with emotions that we miss, uh, you know, a space that we can open the dialogues for parents or for people who are questioning themselves about it or even questioning uh, the, their own parents and the relation to their parents, you know, just Let's just talk about it because I think it's more sane to talk about things, even if it's scary things. It's uh, me. I, I think it's 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 the way to do. I think, but it's just my opinion. And so I I, I was scared to to a little bit to embody uh, my character, but I was very exciting because I had I had the feeling that there is a, a sense of what we're doing right now. I love that. And and Beth, I think, you know, that, that point Noemi was just making about the film having a lot of conversations about things that we don't talk about. There's this journey that we see with Joe where she tries to connect with these other mothers and, and their response is, you know, just rely on your instincts. Your instincts will guide you. Um, and then when there is a moment where she's talking with her mother-in-law, her mother-in-law is actually the first person to have a real conversation with her and share her own experiences from when she became a parent. 
But there's an interesting dynamic in that relationship where Joe doesn't seem ready to open herself up in that moment. And so what was behind that choice of her having looked so hard to try and find that specific connectivity? And then when it happens, her almost just closing off from it because she can't process it. Yeah, I love that you picked up on that because that's exactly the intention of that scene that somebody is finally truthful with her, actually, but the truth is too scary for her to look at, you know, and I think that is so often how these stories of motherhood are received in our culture. They're too scary to look at. And I'm not sure why that is. I've thought a lot about it. I think there's some kind of terror that we have. I mean, we all have mothers and maybe it's our own fear that our mother could abandon us. It is very primal, this terror of looking at these conversations about motherhood. So that's exactly what happens. And, and, and that moment where Joe's mother-in-law reveals something truthful and Joe can't see it is to me a microcosm of the sort of tragedy of our culture that we vilify people for telling the truth. Joe vilifies her mother-in-law in that moment for telling the truth. And it has very terrifying consequences for all of them. Um, and so that that moment to me is sort of the the kernel that contains the entire conversation right there. And Noemi, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the physical aspects of your performance, because I've heard Bess describe how you came with a very clear idea of some of the physical elements, even down to the different ways she's going to hold the baby, depending on where she is emotionally as a character. And I was just interested in how that creates a really strong foundation for you in finding a character. Yeah, the, the body for me is the first uh, thing to work on before to start shooting, uh, even more before the dialogues and all. And so I work with Stephanie Shen, who is choreograph in Paris and uh, then we were uh, when we were with Kit and Bess uh, in New York we did a zoom with her to work on on the body language uh, and yes it was very interesting <laughs> <laughs> it was very interesting because there is the maternity the fact that she's pregnant then you know all what uh, what uh, mother motherhood maternity can do to your body, but is is also how you control things at the beginning, kind of, and everything is glow and shiny and you control, and then you start to lose yourself and how you lose also connection with your own body, how the, your body, like your baby, take the control uh, on you. So we really discussed with Bess and uh, and Stephanie on details, you know, on what gesture, how uh, we can find, how to hold the baby. Also the fact that I, I'm not a mother and I don't have a lot of, I don't really have babies around me in my family or friends. I I didn't know how to take the, the babies uh, in the movie. I, I was... When they were screaming, I was, oh, I, I didn't know how to compose with them. There were two. And they were sometimes doing, they were all the time doing things that we never expected. And sometimes they were doing really nice and amazing proposition. <laughs> and, uh, but sometimes it was not what they were supposed to do. And, and it's like in the movie, you have to, you, they're so sincere and they don't faint, fake, fake. Um, so you, you you have to compose to adapt to them and that is that is a movie also that is interesting uh, sensation for an actor it's different than uh, you know to play with uh, yeah Absolutely. And, and Bess, I love something that you've said about working with babies on this film, because this is your first time as a feature director and you had, you know, two babies, twins that were interchangeable, but you're so limited in how much time you have with them. But I love that you've said how that actually was a really helpful tool as a first time filmmaker, because it forced you to have very concrete, creative choices going into filming because you had to have a really set plan. You couldn't be getting your 15 minutes that you can film with one of the kids and not be sure how you were going to go into a scene and so how did it really help you to cement a lot of the decisions that you were making creatively yeah I think it focused me and it focused everybody on set because 
first of all, as you said, you only have 15 minutes at a time with these babies. And then uh, you also, if it's an emotionally um, sort of elevated scene, you have 30 seconds with them. So, I mean, it is like really like, let's focus for this time and not waste not waste a second of time with the baby. So that was really focusing. And also having a, a, a being on set that is so vulnerable and needs to be protected at all times, because obviously our highest priority was safety of the babies and they couldn't advocate for themselves, their babies. I think it created a, a real sense of care on set and a sense of intentionality and a sense of sort of um, humanity with each other, you know, um, and sort of, um, uh, you know, force everyone to be at the top of their game all the time. I mean, not, Noemi is always at the top of her game in every situation, maybe or not, but it really, it really elevated everybody and, and created a lot of beautiful focus. Um, uh, and so in a way, it's that thing where like your biggest challenge is always the greatest gift. I think that the babies were, were both of those things in the making of the film. And and for both of you, with the central character of Joe, there's a lot of delicacy in watching this journey and this arc that's created for her. And even just those elements of sleep deprivation and, you know, emotional fragility that's developing further and further and becoming more heightened for her as a character. And so I was interested for both of you and how you really worked together to craft those details and to figure out what are these different breaking points and, you know, okay, now she's several weeks further into being a mother and not having slept what is it that's changed from the last few scenes that we've seen her in tu peux me je suis pas sûre d'avoir tout compris sorry <laughs> c'est euh, comment est-ce que tu as uh, trouvé le, le trajectory le le dénouement de du caractère de Joe de trouver tous les tous les points uh... It, it's always, uh, you know, hard when you shoot a movie with such a big um, trajectoire. Yeah, trajectory. Trajectory, because unless you have the chance to shoot chronologically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's not, it was not the case, and it's really rare, actually. So you have to really... Uh, uh, I mean, I was trusting a lot Beth and um, because when I'm doing this, uh, I mean, when I'm doing the scene, it, it's hard to de-zoom and, you know, remember, okay, before this, before the, you know, I mean, before it's this, after it's this. Yeah, I think about it, but I'm, I'm uh, a little bit, I, I don't want to think too much. Because if I start to think too much, uh, I start to be too much psychological. It's the work I do before the shooting. But while I'm I'm doing it, I'm more kind of instinctive, even more for um, a character like this, who is what is important to do more and more uh, through, you know, the story is to let go. So just to let go and don't give a... Want to do some food? Don't give a fuck. Yeah. Don't yeah, give a fuck. Sorry, I don't have another talk <laughs> about, you know, about anything. Just you're in your thing and and um you start to like do like start to 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 be exhausting. And when you're exhausting, you don't you don't give a fuck, you know. So except to her my baby, actually, but um that was the only thing. It was the link with the baby uh, in the movie. Um, yeah. And yeah. how about for you, Bess? Because you've got that character arc, and at the same time, you're also working with those different themes and tones that we were talking about before. Yeah, and it's interesting because I too wanted to stay in a, you know, obviously I have a very different job from Noemi on set, but I, I'm also working with my intuition and trying to respond in the moment to what feels most exciting and alive. And I think honestly, a lot of the sort of plotting of the arc, of course it was on the page. Then we shot in this really fast, visceral, 
way, you know, we didn't have a lot of time and we were really trusting our instincts as, as the mom unhelpfully says in the movie, but we were actually, you know, like following that advice, we were trusting our gut. And I think a lot also happened in the edit in terms of calibrating where the character is and Noemi beautifully was able to play scenes at different, um, in different registers, you know, she can just, you know, do one this way, do one that way and sort of uh, give a lot of options in terms of the different ways that she plays the scene. So when I came into the edit, I had just like this incredible multiplicity of choices. And it was the edit where I sort of thought a lot about like, how tired is she in this scene? And what would her reaction be in this moment? And, you know, I remember in an early scene with the doctor, there's a moment where he makes a joke. And I thought a lot about like, is she in a place to laugh at this joke because she's connecting to him? Or is she not in a place to laugh at this joke because she's sort of, um, you know, too tired? And so there, the, it was those sort of little moments of decision that, that sort of actually in a way came later that helped really shape exactly how the journey unfolds. I love that. And and Noemi, were, were there challenges for you in playing a character and finding all the different tones? Or do you just focus on character and not think about the different tones at play? Because there's psychological thriller, there's emotional drama, there's comedy, there's so much at play. Yeah, I mean, it's what you have to do is to be always sincere, but it's it's there is so many tones in the movie, as you said, and it's 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 a thriller, horror, and comedy. So you push everything in on uh, the mise en scène, on the direct direction, the mise en scène, the photography, but also on the acting. It's you can't play it like you you do a a movie of uh, I don't know, I don't have an idea of uh, who you know really. Uh, a film, a naturalist movie, uh, you can't, you can't play it like that because it's not the same tone and rhythm and no, everybody had to push, you know, the, yeah. And, but we are like that sometime in life. In life we push, uh, and, and when we do nightmare also, everything is more than, um, you know, the degrees is, uh, sorry for my English, I start to, uh, so yeah, I had to play with these things, but find real emotions, but with a little décalage, come on, dit décalage. Like a little um, lag, a little space sort of well, um, away from it, like a little. Une légère dissonance, une légère, un léger décalage, but that that is all in Huh? Like a little gap almost, or a little space, a distance. A distance with, you know, reality, reality, you know, like it's, the note is a little bit not true because all the movie is like this for me. I love that and, and really love what you've both created along with the rest of the team in this film. So congratulations on everything. And thank you so much for talking with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks Very for the great much. question. Thank you. Thank you.